is no doubt that the demand for public cloud solution is rising at an extensive rate and this translates to growing opportunities for public cloud providers as well. And two of the major cloud players of 2019 are Amazon Web Services and Google Cloud Platform. Hey guys, this is Shubham from IntelliPath and today we are going to compare both of these cloud giants and discuss which one to choose. So without any further delays, let's get started. First, let's take a brief look over both of these cloud services. Starting off with Amazon Web Services, where according to their official website, Amazon Web Services is a subsidiary of Amazon.com which provides on-demand cloud computing platforms to individuals, companies and governments on a paid subscription basis. Similarly, Google Cloud which is offered by Google is a suite of cloud computing services that runs on the same infrastructure that Google uses internally for its end user products such as Google search engine and YouTube. Now let's look into the history and talk about the establishment of both. AWS was launched in 2006, thus having more experience in cloud domain than Google or any other cloud computing providers and has successfully met the on-demand needs of enterprises in regards to cloud computing platform. On the other hand, Google Cloud was launched in 2011, which is no doubt a third competitor after Azure and is quite a reliable and cheap cloud computing platform for businesses. But still, the question remains, how are these two cloud services different and what are the factors that we need to focus on while comparing AWS and Google Cloud? That we shall discuss while we move ahead. Starting off from the basic and discuss the first factor that is the availability zones. We are all aware of their establishments now. We all know that the AWS was the first one of its kind, right? Which means AWS is hosting in multiple locations worldwide. And of course, it's true for Google as well. But here also, the difference occurs in the numbers of region and availability zones. Talking of numbers, AWS has 55 availability zones worldwide with 8 more on its way. Whereas Google is having 18 availability zones with 3 more on the way, which is no doubt is quite lesser than AWS. Now let's move forward and talk about the next factor that is the market share. If we check this graph right here, which clearly depicts that how AWS is leading with 40% of public cloud market share worldwide on its name. Whereas Azure is on the second place with 30% of market share and Google Cloud is on the third place with 10% of market share and the other cloud providers are at 20%. Right. Also, if you check the Google Trends graph and compare the popularity, these are the stats where you can easily figure out that how interest for AWS has been surpassing Google Cloud worldwide in the past 12 months. Also, if you check their search results and trends according to USA, same cases here as well, where there is more interest for AWS than Google Cloud. In case of India, here are the results. Still, AWS is more trending than Google Cloud. These are the results from past 12 months and have been varying and relatively increasing with AWS on first and Google Cloud on third place from the past decade. And guys, according to a recent report by CNBC, even though Google Cloud is lagging behind AWS and Azure with $5.44 billion and $6 billion respectively, they have crossed a $1 billion per quarter of revenue by 2018, which is actually a good number for Begner, who just recently entered into the public cloud market. It is just taking time to cope up with other cloud providers because of being a latecomer in the cloud domain, we can say. Also, Google Suite now has 4 million paying customers, said by Sundar Pichai. Sounds convincing, right? Now, what we can conclude from the fact that AWS is on the first place as a cloud provider is that due to its more experience and implementation in the cloud domain, it obviously has a bigger community support and trust across its clients. This is the reason why AWS has more high profile customers like Netflix, Airbnb, Unilever, BMW, Samsung, Xiaomi, Zynga, etc. No doubt, I haven't seen too many experience reports on Google Cloud, but almost every feedback or reviews I checked about them were good enough. Since they share the same infrastructure that of Google search engine and YouTube, that is why many huge companies are having faith on them. And some of the major clients are HSBC, PayPal, 20th Century Fox, Bloomberg, Target, Domino's, etc. Don't you think it's quite impressive for a public cloud provider like Google to be on third place with such huge revenue even when they are relatively new when compared to a title holder such as AWS? Now after discussing their establishment in the market, let's talk about what each provider has to offer in terms of services and then discuss about their integration with the open source tools. So the services which I'm going to compare here comes under the following domains. Compute, Database, Storage, Security, Networking, Monitoring, Development and Internet of Things. So AWS covers up like 200 plus services, whereas Google Cloud have been catching up with it. 
with a lesser number of 60 plus services. In these domains, some of the services that AWS covers are Amazon Web Services EC2, RDS, S3, IAM, VPC, CloudWatch, Cloud9, IoT Core, and many more. Similarly, Google Cloud covers the services like Cloud Engine, Cloud Data Store, Cloud Storage, Cloud IAM, Cloud DNS, or we can call it Google Cloud DNS, Stack Driver Monitoring, Cloud SDK, Cloud IoT Core, and many more, no doubt with a listen number. And also, both of these cloud providers have better relations with the open source communities. Both AWS and Google Cloud can integrate with multiple open source tools like Docker, Ansible, GitHub, Jenkins, Kubernetes, TensorFlows, etc. And more importantly, they are both friendlier when it comes to the Linux servers. Now, another factor is its downtime and speed. So, having a matured infrastructure, the maximum downtime faced by AWS in 2015 was of 2 hours and 30 minutes. Whereas, having a progressing infrastructure, Google faced a huge downtime of 11 hours and 34 minutes in 2015. And that is why when you compare the reliability in both, this is where AWS comes out to be a preferable choice. Talking about its speed, well, this is where Google Cloud Platform takes the lead. Let us take from a basic demonstration that how quick both of these services are when it comes to launching an instance. Now I've opened up my account on AWS Management Console as well as on the Google Cloud Platform. So we'll start off from launching an Ubuntu machine. So we'll start from EC2 in AWS which comes under the compute domain. So click on EC2 and launch instance and select the Ubuntu server. I'm going to select the t2.micro because it comes under the free tier eligibility and we need not configure anything here and simply click on review and launch it. It will ask you for a key pair. So we, we are going to create a new key pair here. So like, let's keep it as demo AWS. Okay. And download the key pair. So it will download it for you and launch the instance. So now it is initiating the instance. So you can see it is on the pending state and even after that it is running so it will also uh, do the statistic where it will be initializing it for you so let's see how fast here the compute engine is so this is how your google dashboard looks like we'll go to the compute engine and click on vm instances there are already three running instances and we'll click on create instance and select the ubuntu machine here ubuntu 8.04 and select and we need not configure anything here no key pair nothing and simply create the instance. Let's wait for our instance to launch. Okay, this is on the running state, but still the status checks is initializing. Okay, and you cannot connect to it currently. So let's wait for our Google instance to launch. So guys, now you can check that uh, launching an instance here is quite easier as well as it is faster than AWS Management Console. Okay, from this I can easily conclude that Google Cloud Platform is way faster than AWS when it comes to launching an instance or even deploying an operating system, even in terms of VM size. So guys, now let's move ahead and check their pricing models. In case of AWS, a very basic instance which includes two virtual CPUs and 8 GB of RAM will cost you around $69 per month. And when compared to GCP with 25% cheaper rate, it will cost you around $52 per month. Also, the largest instance offered by AWS is of 3.84 TB of RAM along with 128 virtual CPUs which will cost you around $3.97 per hour. And in case of Google, this is where Google takes the lead with a whooping number of 160 virtual CPUs with a 3.75 TB of RAM which will cost you around $5.32 per hour which I believe is much cheaper in terms of virtual CPUs provisioning as compared to AWS. And mind you guys, GCP has been catching up quickly. As prior to March 2017, the largest VM on GCP only had 32 CPUs and prior to 2018, this is the growth rate that we discussed here. Now let's move ahead. So what are the job trends in AWS and Google Cloud? So this is again a frequently asked question by most of the learners in the cloud domain. If we discuss the job trends in both, well, check this graph here, which shows that starts of the job posting in previous four years. Where green line is for the job trends in AWS Solutions Architect and the orange line is for job trends in Google Cloud Solutions Architect. You can easily observe from this graph that there has been a rise for the jobs in AWS, whereas in case of Google, it is still rising. Since it's a new cloud provider in the industry, as we discussed above, Google may take some time to rise to that level. Since AWS is already leading in the market shares with 40% of it, that means there are greater number of jobs in case of AWS as compared to Google with 10% of the shares. 
So it purely concludes that there are a greater number of jobs in case of AWS. But I would like to say, this doesn't mean that Google Cloud does not have that potential or capacity to reach to this level in coming future because the kind of services Google Cloud is providing right now are doing quite well. So guys, who do you think is the winner here? AWS or Google Cloud? Well, most of you must have figured out from the above stats that how Google Cloud is rising at an advanced rate and is always at the third place after AWS and Azure. No doubt Google Cloud may surpass AWS and Azure someday which makes it very difficult to declare one of them as the winner. As Google have many advantages over AWS like pricings and speed, however, AWS has been a consistent pioneer in the cloud services. Its more mature infrastructure causing less downtime each year makes AWS a preferable choice for majority of the users. So guys, thank you so much for watching this session. I would love to hear from you guys that which one of them is better according to you and why. Please reply to us in the comment section below. See you again.